Hey everybody, welcome to the Goody Reader Radio Show. This is Marcus. Today we're going to talk about some news in the tablet slate PC world, as well as a little bit of e-reader news. The biggest news item of the day is Apple delaying the international launch of the iPad yet again. You guys probably know that the initial international release date was at the end of April. And then they said, okay, we don't have enough units to actually furnish the demand for the U.S., so we'll do it at the end of May. Now they've announced that they're going to be doing it towards the end of June. Initially, June 7th was the date that a lot of the pre-orders internationally were going to ship, but it looks like that that's going to be scrapped, and they don't have an exact date in June when they're going to do it. We have a feeling it's going to be more towards about the end. There's a huge demand for the iPad, especially the lower tier models like the 16 gigabit Wi-Fi and the 3G version. And so there's really not enough units even to furnish de de demand for the United States, much less internationally, although Apple's really trying hard to take the iPad to the next level, get more brand recognition, and actually ship these you know, overseas and internationally. There's a lot of companies such as Rogers Wireless in Canada, Orange in the UK, many others that are going to be selling these to the consumers directly. Uh, if you live in the UK, they're selling the 16 gigabit model for about £429 and they're doing the 16 gigabit Wi-Fi and 3G for about £529. So they're not going to really have a lot of iPads directly in the store. It's on a first come first serve basis, although if you have pre-ordered it, that's probably your best chance in order to actually get it. Now, in a little bit of other iPad news, the Apple iBook store has actually just opened to international users. So if you were lucky enough to pre-order an iPad, buy it off of eBay, off of Craigslist or other gray market sites, you can actually now register your iPad in Canada, the UK, and other countries like that and get act actually access to the Apple iBook store. Now, here's the woes right now. Many people say that when they tried it in Canada or the UK, the iBook store is a barren wasteland. There's not a whole lot of books available. It's basically regulated to classics only. There's no bestsellers, no modern books that you can actually buy. Now, Apple pretty well is overhauling the iBookstore for international users. Obviously, in the U.S., they have different laws, they have different publishing agreements, and those things don't transcend marketplaces. So, the Apple iBookstore agreements that they may have in the United States don't transition well to Canada or the UK or other companies, mainly because of competition and things like that. So, if you have an iPad in Canada, the UK, Germany, Europe, etc., even Australia and New Zealand, you won't actually be able to buy any new books off of the iBookstore. So, we recommend if you want to have full access to the iBookstore now, we definitely recommend that you register a US version of the iPad and the way that you can do that is to simply buy a US iTunes gift card. You can do that by mainly purchasing on eBay. Even just a $15 card will work for you and that will allow you to actually register your iPad as if you live in the United States and have full access to the entire iBook store. Now, keep in mind, if you do live outside of the U.S. and you're not too much of a fan of the iBook store, or say you've had a Kindle and you have a lot of Amazon books, or you have a bookstore preference such as Kobo, the Sony bookstore, Barnes & Noble, and otherwise, they definitely have apps that you can download in order to actually buy directly from those bookstores and store and read your books on your iPad. Now. Getting into some other news, an item that we're very excited about here at Goody Reader is the Dell Mini 5. It's going to be available in the UK in early June. They're looking at about June the 4th or 5th is when it's going to be available. Now, 
it's basically an oversized smartphone. It does 800 by 480 for pixel resolution, has 2 gigabytes of storage. We really like the Snapdragon processor found in the Google Nexus One. That's about 1 gigahertz speed. You can put up to 32 gigabytes of micro SD inside of it. 5 megapixel autofocusing camera with LED flash. You do video, it does Wi Fi, Bluetooth. It functions on a tremendous amount of different networks. We really like this because despite the fact that it's running only on Google Android 1.6, they have announced that later on in the year it will be compatible with Android 2.2 and Flash 10.1. So we recommend this item as a buy. It's definitely not the most expensive phone out there. Word has it that it's going to retail anywhere between three to four to five hundred dollars. But if you want a smartphone that's Android, that's made by a reputable company and has a hell of a lot of great features, we definitely can recommend the Dell Mini 5. It'll be available in O2 stores early next month and it should be available in the US at the very beginning of July so keep your eyes out for that uh, speaking of new tablets coming uh, to market there's going to be a new tablet called the Arco 7 it's available now it runs on the Android 1.5 operating system does about 7 inches of a multi touch screen 800 by 480 resolution, 8 gigabytes of internal storage, but you could jack it up to about 32 gigabytes with a micro SD card. The device does about 720p HD for video playback, so you can watch movies, but it won't do 1080, of course. You can surf the internet, browse, check emails, etc. It doesn't have access to the Android marketplace, so Word has it that it possibly could in a future update, but we would almost pass on this device right now. It looks to be an interesting device as far as price. It's only going to be roughly a few hundred dollars, and it's going to be available in European countries, in the U.S., about mid-next month. Despite the fact that it is economically feasible to purchase this, we would take a pass on the Arcos. Now, we wanted just to give you some guys some knowledge. The Amazon firmware update 2.5 has rolled in. It gives you the ability to scan PDFs properly. There's new folder structure. It's easier to sort magazines, ebooks into various collections. Uh, it also allows you to post books to Facebook and Twitter. So the 2.5 update is, is available now. It's only available for the Kindle 2 and Kindle DX. The update is not available for the original Kindle. Now very quickly, there's a new tablet coming out of Australia called the Tiga Tablet PC. And this is from a company called Tiga Tech. Now they have been doing tablet slate PCs um, as well as UMPCs for a number of years in Australia and New Zealand. So this is a homegrown Australian company that's doing it. 10.2-inch uh, LCD resistive touchscreen, 1024 by 600. So out of a lot of the newer tablets coming out that are usually 800 by 480, 1024 by 600 is definitely very good. It does landscape and normal viewing. It does Wi-Fi, of course. 3G functionality is built in. It has a 1.6 gigahertz Intel Atom processor and about a gig of DDR2 RAM. Now, battery life is pretty abysmal with only 2.5 to 3 hours. So if you want to extend your battery life, we definitely recommend switching off the Wi-Fi. There's three USB ports, a LAN port, headphone jack, internal micro microphone. This is pretty well the all-in-one tablet. It has everything that you could ask for. It'll retail for about $995. If you live in Australia and you like supporting Australian companies, this might be a good purchase. But for the money, there's definitely better products to get. For the Giddy Reader Radio Show, this is Marcus.